Hi, I'm Magdalene Rose, and people say that I'm obsessed with the 90s. Okay, valid, this is true, but in my defense, so is everyone else right now. The 90s are very 2019. Yeah. This video is about Bill and Ted's excellent adventure and how it pertains to 90s culture even though it was technically released in 1989. I am aware of this fact and in my professional opinion I think that it still counts. Please do not yell at me in the comment section, I know what I'm doing. When people think of movies that defined the 90s, the list will almost always include a movie called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. This was not by any means the most influential or critically acclaimed film of the time, but it still holds a place of reverence in people's hearts. Like, I don't think I can even interact with the question of whether or not it's a good film from a filmmaking standpoint because I love it so much. So full disclosure, this is not a review. I am way too emotionally compromised to review this movie. Also, you're not allowed to review it either. Never speak to me or my son again. For the purposes of this video, I will be referring to both Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and the sequel, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, interchangeably as just Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Please, with the comp, don't, with the I, I know. So what's all the fuss about? Well, Bill and Ted is a buddy comedy about two high school slackers trying to finish a book report so they don't flunk out of school, and as I'm saying that out loud, I'm realizing that that doesn't sound like a compelling plot, with, but stick with me, okay? We are in danger of flunking most heinously tomorrow, Ted. One time traveling telephone booth. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. I'm here to help you with your history report. What? If I'm being uncomfortably honest here, I watched this movie last year, and I cried. And I'm not a crier. I am much more of a, like, stuff everything down until one day you snap and start throwing kitchen knives at the mailman sort of person. But I did. I cried. Like a deranged adolescent after their first breakup. Why? If there's one thing that Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure captures about this time period, it was a feeling of hope and excitement for the future. It also captures other, less flattering, aspects of that time period. Bag. Excuse me, do you know where there are any personages of historical significance around here? How's it going, royal ugly dudes? Despite their humble beginnings, Bill S. Preston Esquire and Ted Theodore Logan God, I just realized that means his name is Theodore Theodore Logan. <laughs> the two discover that in the future, their music is destined to bring about world peace. If they flunk out of school, they'll be separated and the band will never fulfill its destiny, and then we'll end up with... Well... Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. The movie paints the future as almost utopian with amazing advances in science and education. And that is a view of the future that's becoming more and more scarce. So it's 25 years later, and we have a handful of enormous corporations responsible for most of the world's pollution leading us towards a climate catastrophe and like not even slowly, just we're booking it towards shit world and we have a lot of politicians who are doing everything that they can to ignore the problem because those same corporations make up a big part of their political donations. Far-right extremism is on the rise, PewDiePie is the most popular entertainer on the internet, and everything just generally sucks. So the idea of a future that's healthy, peaceful, and united in a mutual love of epic power ballads is really appealing right now. Even for people who weren't even born when it happened, perhaps even especially for them. This is called retrofuturism, literally a past era's idea of what the future will be like. The nostalgia for the retrofuturism of Bill and Ted's excellent adventure falls into the category of what Svetlana Boyum called reflective nostalgia. Reflective nostalgia is a sort of escapism into a past that one deems a simpler time, and according to Boyum, people are often nostalgic for a time period directly before a huge cultural shift. 
The trends of the 1990s don't just remind us of GAC and summer vacations. It also reminds us of growing up before, you know, certain events. I am, of course, referring to Woodstock 99. Thanks for ruining culture, Limp Biscuit. Modern culture is always a bit haunted by its past. So in that way, Bill and Ted is more like Casper and less like the kid from The Grudge. <laughs> That's Ken Starr. <laughs> Hauntological nostalgia, y'all, like simulation theory. The 90s revival is like a simulacra of reality that creates this mythological dreamscape of hyper-reality. I'm sorry, this video is about Bill and Ted? This video is about Bill and Ted. Recently, they announced that there will be a third installment to the Bill and Ted series, Bill and Ted Face the Music. This is all very cool and I'm excited about it, but what the heck have these two been doing for the past 25 years? Well, I'm happy to announce that as of the filming of this video at 12.06 p.m., uh, Keanu Reeves is still adorable. Like he's still giving up his seat to passengers on the subway and he's still buying lunches for special effects crews. If you type Keanu Reeves into Google, you're just gonna get a horde of stories about him being a stand-up dude. So as of right now, Keanu Reeves is still American Jesus. Thank you for your service. But what about Alex Winter? Whatever happened to Bill S. Preston Esquire? You may have assumed that his career just fizzled out, but you'd be wrong. The reason you may not have seen Alex Winter as much is because he took his career behind the camera. Alex Winter became a documentarian who's covered both the rise of the Napster controversy and the Panama Papers. Y'all remember the Panama Papers, don't you? Maybe you should watch the documentary, life comes at you fast. Media analysis and politics, like Alex, What's your favorite tea? You're, you're invited to my house. I'm dead serious. <laughs> Keanu can come too, it's okay. The movie is being directed by Dean Pariso, who is best known for Galaxy Quest, so that's a pretty good sign. He also directed several episodes of The Good Wife, which has just been over here, being quietly one of the best shows on TV right now while you all watch House Hunters. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. It's always a little unsettling when your favorite movies get dragged back into the spotlight, but I think in this particular instance, it's a good move. It may even be, dare I say, important. But why, Maggie? Why is this so important? And are you seriously going to try and make this about capitalism? Yes, gentle viewer. Yes, I am. Media theorist Mark Fisher believed that we're becoming increasingly incapable of imagining new futures, as the bright future we imagined never arrived. In his words, the future has been canceled. And ironically, we return to the past to relive our dreams of the future. Yeah, but that's another video. I do think he had a point though. I mean, we haven't achieved the excellent future that we dreamed of. And a lot of people feel lost and unsure of where to go from here. But sometimes, when you're lost, the best thing to do is retrace your steps. Honestly, I don't even care if this movie is imperfect. I'm just so tired of dystopias. I need a better vision of the future. I think we all do.